What is good, Regis recipients? How are y'all doing today? Let me know in the comment section. I want to thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of Regis Reflections. Y'all already know each and every episode, we have a different athlete on this podcast. And on this week, we got my dog, Jordan. Say what's up to the people, Jordan. Yo, what's happening, man? Thank you for having me, man. I uh, appreciate you. Appreciate you coming on the show and taking the time out of your day to join us on this episode. But I got to start it off. What's your mental health doing on a scale of 1 to 10 right now? What my mental health is? Yeah, on a scale of 1 to 10. Uh, I give it like a good 7 right now, mm-hmm. 6 sometimes. It's just because I ain't hooping right now, so I'm just waiting on the process. I feel you. I feel you. Thank you. Just keep it hooping. Hey, we all miss hoops, though. So, we just, yeah. if y'all don't know, Jordan here is a basketball player at Jackson State University. What position do you play, Jordan? On the board. Dang, so I got to start it off. Since you're a hooper, I have to start off every conversation. Is Braun or MJ to go to you? Come on, man. I'm, I was born in 2001. LeBron. Okay, okay, me. okay. Right answer. Okay. I had to ask. Like I Okay, I had to ask it's like you. a super freak, like a freak of nature. Six nine, like two fifty, running the floor. Come on, man! You can't teach none of that. Actually, he's like 30, 40 years old. Like he can't torch. <laughs> so, Jordan, can you let the listeners and viewers know where are you from? I'm from Mobile, Alabama, uh, small town, bottom of the map. Would you say that basketball is popular out there? Uh, nah, really, football. Football, like, you play that mm-hmm. from four years old till you can't no more, really. Wow. Like, it's the coach out here. I can see it. Bam, bam are different out there than Bama boys. Bama boys. So who or what kind of got you into the sport of basketball? Uh, it was more like, it was more challenging to me, really, because football came so naturally. So mm-hmm. I found, I started falling out of love with football because I played it so much, and it just felt like life. I don't know. It felt like, I don't know. It just felt like I was supposed to be doing it. But mm. that's why it was kind of new for me. So when I did that, it was kind of a little challenging. And I just wanted a new challenge. Mm. So what age did you kind of switch from football to basketball? I played, I started playing basketball in like middle school, late middle school, really. Ninth mm-hmm. grade, eight or ninth grade, really. But I mean, around 11th grade, that's when I really just, you no. Know, 12th, born into 12th grade, that's when I really was like, I got to hoop. Like, I'm getting athletic. Uh, it's getting fun. I really started late, though. You did? So, wait, when you made that switch, did you ch- make that switch, or was it your coaches, your boys, or your parents to switch from? Nah, I actually did. My coaches hated it in high school at the moment. Like, I tried to quit football, but they wouldn't let me, really. The, the football coach was kind of like, the, what is it called? The athletic director at the school, so the mm-hmm. basketball coach was kind of scared or whatever. Like, he didn't know what he would do. So, I, I kind of still had to play. But I, I, I tried to leave it alone, though. It, just, it was just always coming back, though, in the end? Yeah. Huh? It, it was just always coming back to you in the end, though, football? Yeah. So I still got a love for it, though. I still got love for the game. Like, I watch it 24-7, play all the games. Like, I got a feel for it, just. It was time for a change, I guess. It's time. So wait, do you did you hit a growth spurt in high school? Like from- Yeah. With between like eighth and ninth grade, I probably grew like I don't know, I probably was like five, ten, eighth grade, and I got to ninth grade, probably was like six three. And then when I got to tenth grade, probably was like six five. So were you kind of glad that you stayed on the basketball side or you would kind of wish you went to football with that height because you know you could dominate? As of right now, bro, I kind of wish I would stay in football because it's just so much easier, you feel me, to, like, go pro. But then again, it's easy to go pro in basketball, too. It's just harder to go in the NBA, so. That's true. You're right. So, like, I I kind of felt like God did what he did for a reason. That's true. That's true. So, when you made that switch and kind of knew it was serious for you to play basketball, how was that kind of your high school experience playing basketball at home in Alabama? Uh, It was really – Playing by Alabama, it was kind of it was kind of fun. Like I wish I could have played like more AAU though, because I I started so late, so it was kind of old with, for the AAU. Yeah, that's but, true. Like, it was very fun though, like because sports is big down here, so every event, every game is going crazy. 
when you playing against your brothers, you know how high school goes. So yeah, it was a good time. So what was kind of like you were in, you finished your senior year and now you're thinking about playing collegiate basketball. What school did you choose to go to and come, kind of what was the reasoning behind that? So I, I, I had like ACT problems or whatever at the time. So like I had to go Juco mm -hmm. and I had Hutch, Hutchison for football, right? Mm -hmm. Or um, it was just school. I could have went, I can't really remember. It was my JUCO for basketball to Oklahoma. Those were like my best options as far as JUCOs because I didn't want to sign like um, no other school or nothing. So Hutch was like at the time like top three in the nation in JUCO or whatever. And they told me I wasn't going to play like my freshman year or whatever or something like that. So I just was like, yeah, it's basketball. Like, I don't, I don't know. Okay. Oklahoma, which was a very humbling experience. Like, you got to look that school up. It's a very small school in Clarksdale, Mississippi. And I don't know. I just, I don't know. How how was that? How was that kind of experience for you being in Mississippi and being in, in that small environment? How was that time for you? It was very humbling. It teach you how to focus, really, and how to just um. If you it teach you that grind, like if you want something, you want to make it out of this situation, you got to do it because when nobody come to get you. Like it just teach you how to just stay focused, really. How long? How long were you that there? Was the most toughest um experience I had, like post high school. Uh, how long were you there for? Probably like eight months. Let me see. That was pandemic year too. So we started out the year. I came around June. Season starting November, we end up playing in like February or whatever. Then like at the end of February, beginning of March, our season got cut short, mm -hmm. and we had spring break or whatever. And when we came back from spring break, we supposed to play regionals, but when we went home for spring break, they told us don't come back because we got COVID shut down. So it was just a lot going on, really. So when and COVID I never down. came back, like, I hated it so bad. Like I left all my stuff, everything. It was just traumatizing, really. So when COVID kind of happened, did you go back home or were you still? Yeah, for a little bit. Dang. So you just kind of had to put your basketball stuff on pause. Yeah, really. So like, man, a lot went on with that too. So I went, I, COVID happened. We, I'm at home for a couple months or whatever. So boom, it's like summer now. So summer break rolled into it too. So it's like, we still on break. So I'm just chilling. And then I, I get a call from Mo Williams. Like he was mm -hmm. the head coach at Alabama State at the time. He had just got hired. So he called me. I go, I sign or whatever. I end up going there. So they telling us then there too, it was gonna be like we wasn't gonna have a season or whatever because of COVID still. So it was still affecting me at my next school. And mm -hmm. then they flipped it around and was like, Yeah, we're gonna be able to play in January. So it was a lot going on, man. Like he was just ready to get back out there. He was just ready to go out there. Hope, he was just ready to go got to be ready for. Yeah. At the end of the day, you were just ready to go hoop, though. Really? You were just kind of tired of all the drama, in a sense? Huh? I said, you were, were you just tired of all the drama? You just wanted to go hoop? Yeah. At the time, I just, but I didn't really care where I was where I was at, what I was doing. I just wanted to play basketball. I knew like, I was going to work hard. And what I wanted to do is go, wanted to do at the time was just go to Division One. So, mm -hmm. At the time, I really didn't care what I what I wanted to do. Like what I didn't care about nothing but basketball. Like I knew, I knew I, I was gonna do it. I knew like wasn't nothing gonna stop me, and I knew that COVID was gonna end. Just, just stay the course, really. Mm -hmm. So you ended up going and committed to Alabama State and playing basketball there. Started playing in January. How was your experience? Just can you touch a little bit about your experience there, at Alabama State? How that was mentally and physically for you playing there. How was my experience at Alabama State? Mm -hmm. Man, three years, that was lovely. Like, outside of just, like, outside the court and stuff, those were my real friends and stuff. Like, I had a lot of friends, a lot of – seemed like family out there and, like, just support, really. But when I left, I thought I had it like that. I really had more at Jackson State. So, like, it just – 
it all panned out for the greatest. Man. I don't know. It just was God's plan. Mm. But at Alabama State, it's it's a good school or whatever. I just didn't really like the program, the athletic program. But it's it's on the rise though. Mm. Mm. So with that kind of that problem, did you talk to anyone about that, or you just kind of hand, did you handle that yourself with the issue? Uh yeah, I kind of talked to the people about that. I talked to uh, my coach about it. Talked to people in the office too. They kind of did. They doing a lot better though. Like as far as HBCU, they're probably like top three in a lot of things right now. As far as like programs and um, facilities and stuff like that. So. I must say, like, it wasn't – it got be- a little bit better. I'm not sure about it now, though. <laughs> hey, bro, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> Wait, so how, were you playing at Alabama State and playing in your home state, were you, like – were you feeling good about that in a sense? Were you feeling happy because you were at home or – Yeah, like, home? I was – man. But that was, like, the best feeling ever for me at first, like, I loved it, bro, because, like, my parents come to my games. It's nothing but two hours away. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm up here with people I know. Like, just, it was love. It was like, I loved it, bro. It was love. That's true. I just had to do, I had to leave to grow, really. To grow? Yeah. That's I felt like I was just stuck doing the same thing over there, really. Mm. What made you kind of feel that, in a sense? Uh, Really, just... Knowing what I was capable of and not reaching that potential. Hmm. That's a good viewpoint. That's a good viewpoint. So I had to get uncomfortable. Hmm. And you felt that being uncomfortable, you to be uncomfortable, you had to put yourself in a situation by going to Jackson State. Yeah, definitely. Like and did, did Jackson State at bro? that time, like I would never think of myself going there. So being there, it was like, bro, the fun the game's over now. Like you gotta. It's work time now. Like, it's no more fun against these folks. I've been playing against them for the last couple of years. You feel me? Like, so mm-hmm. I got to just get my eye. Like, it's, it's no more like, you know, you get it. Like, just just imagine you leave from Bama and go to Auburn. Bro, your focus is going to be crazy. Exactly. It's time to lock you in. You can't make no slip up, bro. Like, Everybody watch you. Uh, so, did you feel how, in a sense, did going to Jackson State and make you personally grow? Hold on, you can turn your mic up a little bit. I said, how did um how did you going to Jackson State help you grow in a sense? Help you grow? How, how did Jackson State going to Jackson State and playing ball there? How did it help you grow? Oh yeah, that's a good one. Um, uh, so a lot of stuff went on at Jackson State too. My first year in college and my last year in college, a lot of stuff went on. So Jackson State helped me grow because um uh, it was like my last year of school and I had to I had to meet, like, my teammates and coaches, everything. Like, I just had to, like, adapt very quickly. Like, wh- basically, what you have to do if you want to go pro. So, mm-hmm. I it taught me, like, skills, like, communicating and, like, um, just a lot of stuff, really. Just stuff I didn't want to do, I need to do, and discipline and stuff like that. And plus, when I was – this past year at Jackson State, like, we was we had – apartments for our students or whatever so mm. something happened and mold ended up getting an events or something so we had adversity during the season people don't even know like halfway during the season like around november january between november and january maybe december i'm, I'm not sure but we was evicted out of our apartments like we we're division one athlete full scholarship evicted out of our apartments so we planned in the season and like we in standing hotels and it's not because the school, like, like, not funding us money or nothing. It's just, like, what we were staying at, where they had us staying at, it was a, a problem that, a serious problem that had happened. So, it's just, like, it taught me a lot, man. I can't lie. Like, it taught me. Wow. Damn. It taught me some stuff. So, I bet you did grow. Like, you looked at it at a different viewpoint, and you did grow in so many aspects. Wow. That's, um, how many, how many years were you, were you at Jackson State for again? One. One this all happened in one year. One year, man. One year. Now now that you look back on it, are you excited or glad that it happened? Man, I'm glad. Like I that was probably one of the best decisions of my life to go to Jackson because I accomplished a couple goals. Like I only set a couple goals in my life as far as like with this basketball stuff. So when I went to Jackson, I accomplished them. 
mm-hmm. only did it accomplish one goal. But when I went to Jackson, it just taught me like just to be a man, really like the little stuff I was doing at Alabama State, I really wasn't just too much focused about it then because I had a lot of friends and stuff out there I already knew. Mm-hmm. So like I hear it's just straight business and they really took pride in their sports. So like I really was taking pride in what I was doing too. And they, they supported me like crazy out there. So I felt the love. That's real. That's real. So now that you graduated from Jackson State, what is your plan now or in the future with basketball? Do you want to continue pursuing it? Or are you oh, looking yeah. I'm, I'm I'm eventually gonna find out what country I'm going to within like the next two to three weeks. I'm gonna be mm-hmm. leaving. I done talked to over like twenty coaches, NBA, G League, and overseas really, but I'm probably gonna be going overseas real soon. So that's good. Probably that's good. That's good. Wow. So you yeah, got this will be my rookie year. Mm, like my play, my career. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> So, Jordan, I have one final question before we wrap things up. What advice would you give to our listeners and viewers out there on their mental health journey? Man, as far as mental health, like, what I have to say to viewers is don't pay attention to, like, what the next, the next athlete doing or him or he's D1 or he's D2 or his chain or his – his car, this and that, bro. Just just stay the course because it's a lot out there, bro. And like just stay the course. And you can get the same thing if you focus that if you're more focused at your D three, bro, you can get the same place as that person that, that D one is doing. Cause you got more focus than him. Real scouts, they know, they know talent. So like it's no excuses really and and every day is not going to be peaches and rainbows. You know, like, you're going to have some days where you're going through some things, you feel me? But it's a business. And you got to know, like, you got to sometimes separate yourself. You don't have to always – you're not a basketball player. You're a human, you know? Mm-hmm. So you got to make sure you're doing stuff that got your mental right and before you can be able to perform out there, you know? So mental health, you got to put that first. Because without your mental, it don't matter how much you work hard. It don't matter how anything. Without your mental, you're nothing. Like, somebody can have a good mind and never touch the gym. But that person that touch the gym 24-7, if his mind not right, it's over. So you got to have – I feel like mental health is very important. If you need to, talk to your school counselors. Um, um, Go get a counselor. Go get a therapist. Just do a lot of – meditate, maybe anything that whatever makes you feel better. Like if it's if you're disciplined by it, like just do it. You feel me? Like if you got some discipline within it, do it. That's true. I heard it. Well Regis Sippings, you heard from my dog Jordan right here. Jordan, thank you again for coming in on this episode, dropping your knowledge, dropping your story. We really appreciate it. You read your recipients, remember it's okay if you're not okay. It's your boy JD. Yeah, definitely. It's okay to be human. Thank <laughs> you.